pretty good little crowd, you know. It's not like this ain't the only place to watch a game in town. A lot of people huddle together at their house, I'm sure. But thank you for coming, and we'll see if I uh, give, ch- give people a chance to get back in here. Uh, a pretty good game, huh? I mean, it's a pretty tight game. Cincinnati tends to be a really good second-half team. I mean, it's just the way it's been for them, so we'll see. See what happens, you know. But it's a pretty good game. little missed opportunity right there with uh, 40 seconds left, and uh, the guy didn't get out of bounds when he should have, and that would have been third down and one, and you'd have had a timeout left. It could have been a little different outcome. I believe they could have got something right there, but we'll see what happens. And uh, anyway, pretty good game, I think. But good to have you tonight. I'm blessed tonight. I'm going to just turn this over to you, uh, Coach, but that's okay. That's our air conditioner. We had these, uh, they're called socks, air conditioner socks, they call them. I never heard of such a thing. But they're really uh, whatever, I don't know. They're probably cheaper. That's probably why we got them. But uh, actually, they let the air out all around them. They're supposed to be environment, whatever. But anyway, they make that noise. Okay, so you're fine. I did want to say, though, that all I have to say tonight is the privilege that I have of uh, just having good friends like Coach Bears, Coach Southwell, Coach Schick, and there's other coaches in our church, uh, Coach Casal, uh, Jen Heag, Coach Heag, yeah, Coach Kelly, and I uh, got Coach uh, Marinola. And those are just ones I'm thinking of. I mean, I'm probably missing some, and they're all at Lemon Bay High School. I mean, you can't have that many coaches without, that are Christians without having an impact on that campus. And I don't think some of you guys maybe realize the impact you have. Yeah, thank the Lord. Come on. That's powerful. And quite frankly, we're having to look at how we do our youth even differently. It's just a different world we live in. We're having to go where they are. And uh, Don, what do y'all have? FCA every Wednesday? Every Wednesday morning. Do you have special things occasionally? But that's not every week. About once a month. And I've spoken at that. And... uh, you know, the morning ones on Wednesdays not as well attended, but there's a pretty good little group. But, it, but the ones on Friday are pretty well attended. And so that's just a different way. Or Mike having me come in, like the other day, and I gave a scripture. Little ways that we can reach, or me with Don on the football field. Just little ways that we can, you know, get that gospel out and love on these kids. You know what I'm saying? So it's pretty effective. So I just really thank the Lord for y'all letting me be a part of y'all's team and things like that. I really appreciate it. Plus, I just love you, period. You know, and, and then Coach and I, we have a cool ministry because I love to eat. And we have a thing, that is whenever a high school football game is on, I, we always travel. He always drives me when we go away. And we try to take another coach with us or the athletic director, or something like that. And we'll go to a steakhouse, and we always buy, and we don't, you know, sit there and hit them up the head, side of the head with the Jesus thing. You know, we don't do that. We just love the snot out of them, and we form relationships, right? That's a pretty big ministry, isn't it? And then once a year, we try to take Charlie Russo, who's in our church. He's the head trainer for 25 years at Lemon Bay. And we take the girls who are his trainers for the football team we take them out to eat right and we buy buy them a steak get anything you want girls and it's just an hour and you you just you wouldn't believe how those girls would just love you back you know so that's just a little ministry we have through sports and we appreciate it so i'll introduce to you coach chuck bears i love him and he's got he's gonna take over right quick i like you a lot better than snoop dogg Again, real quick, uh, again, we, we at the school really appreciate Fellowship Church and everything. Uh, a bunch of you guys come out to games and everything and support the teams and everything. And we have things, you know, uh, church supports each individual sport. There's banners at the football field. There's banners in the gym. Getting ready to put banners at the softball field and everything. It's just, it's a big support in wrestling. Big, I know pastor's there as much as he can be, and Mike has him out there and everything. But anyways, I uh, just want to thank the church and everybody. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. 
That's Roger, you're killing me. <laughs> I know it was. <laughs> Coach, hey, coach, I think I needed to coach football. <laughs> hey, Coach Mike Schick, let me introduce you first and uh, have you say a little something, just real quick. I don't want to throw Everett on the spot right away. Give him some time. <laughs> yep, yep. Mike, Mike this year just got put into Lemon Bay's inaugural Sports Hall of Fame at the school and everything, and his success through, he went to the Ohio State University. <laughs> I'm sorry for him, though, and I know his parents, but they're big Michigan people, and that's where you guys were raised. <laughs> okay. So, anyways, Mike Schick is our head wrestling coach. Uh, a couple minutes, and then I'll give it to Everett and Coach. Evert. Hey, Raj, guess who's coming flying in on uh, Friday to, to uh, on a recruiting visit to uh, Lance to see Lance? And I got a cook, Tom Ryan. Yeah. Ohio State wrestling coach, yeah, he's coming in. So I, I don't know what uh, I, I'm supposed to say. I mean, I'm, I've been a coach at uh, Lemon Bay for six years now, and uh, you know, the impact that um, uh, I'm making on the kids is one thing, but I think the way that the kids are impacting me is another. I, I'm I'm blessed, and I'm blessed to be around a, a lot of a great people. Um, I know that we're here in a church and. I've asked to talk about my testimony, and you know, this is my 15th anniversary here at this church. 2000, 2007, um, I was sitting up in the auditorium. Actually, no, I'll give you the story. I was, uh, uh, if some of you guys don't know, I went through a divorce in 2007. 2007, and I, um, uh, it was Valentine's weekend, and I'm, I, I'm, was kind of feeling a little down in the dumps, and needed something and I ended up driving and I grew up my mom and my dad are here I, I ended up growing up in the Catholic Church went through catechism did the whole thing so I was influenced early on with uh, you know trying to find my way with my religion and my uh, relationship with God but um, driving around and I pull into the Catholic Church and I just I, 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 I remember going through all the routine that they do with the Catholic Church and not not that I'm I'm going to browbeat the Catholic Church, but I, it just, it wasn't for me, and I, I left. I left the parking lot, and I started driving, and I had a friend that ended up telling me about fellowship, uh, and I'm driving, and uh, there's the sign. There's signs everywhere, and I was like, all right, I'm going to the school, and I remember sitting up in the top of the auditorium, and I was wicked mad at, at Gary for the, the, the sermon that was that day, but um, we, we talked about it, and uh, I won't go into that, but I, I, I stayed, and I um, you know, part of the reason why I stayed is I, the, the, the love that um, uh, we get uh, not only from Gary, but from everybody here. And for me, I just, I'm, I, I'm not anybody special. I'm still trying to find my way. I'm 52 years old and, uh, you know, trying to find my way with my relationship with God. I know that it's there. Um, and, you know, having a friend like Gary, uh, not only is my pastor, but to, to love on me and encourage me and, and help me grow in my relationship with God. I think it's been pretty good. The last thing I'll say is I know you guys know that I went on a trip to uh, a, a, a long trip, 2,193 miles. I have a lot of time to think. And one of the cool things about going on a trip like that is that there's no distractions. My gift when I got home was driving in 10 lanes of traffic in Atlanta. <laughs> that was, I mean, and I had been out in the woods and I had nothing. And uh, next thing you know, I, uh, you know, walking and walking and walking and had nothing to do. It's like, what do I do? Twiddle my thumbs while I'm walking. And I had a lot of time to think. And I'll, I'll end with this. You know, being an athlete and um, you, you had to be successful, you had to be disciplined in what you do. Every, every day, you know, you, you wake up and you have a regimen of what you do. And a lot of times we take for granted that we don't apply that with all the other things in our life. And I don't think I applied that in my life with, uh, with God. And going on that trip, did that for me and uh, so being here with Gary and this church is a blessing and knowing that I have a friendship with him I can I can continue to do that so that's what I got all right next up one of our football players is graduating this year from SFSW collegiate high school over in Ponte Gorda um, Everett Baker and uh, Coach, you want to say anything about Everett real quick? 
going to look. Every, How y'all doing? So, so this is going to come as a shock to you two. Uh, his parents are sitting down here. Everett's decided not to graduate this year. He's going to come back and play for the Manor Rays one more year. And I'm the happiest guy in the room about that. But no, just kidding. Uh, no, Everett, uh, I told this story. I don't remember. It might have been the football banquet. Uh, one of my first recollections of him was a toddler smaller than my son that's running around here. We were actually at my sister-in-law's house watching uh, a Christmas movie, and that's my first recollection of, of uh, Everett. And boy, he's grown since then, and you know, watching him grow up here in the church, and watching him get big, and hoping he'd play football when he got to high school. And uh, uh, He's three-time all-area uh, offensive lineman. Uh, what helped me? There may be other things. I know those three. Um, there was an all-state on there, um, but just a better person and uh, was a big part of the leadership of our team and the culture of our team. Just having somebody with his strength and uh, his character was a blessing uh, for four years, and I'm going to miss him a lot. So, love you, buddy. All right, I ain't lived as long as these other guys. This ain't going to be too long, but um, I was – I was born up in Kettering, Ohio, and I moved down here when I was about two, and we've, my family has been attending fellowship since I was about four. So I've grown up in this church family for as long as my memory serves me well, and I've always been surrounded by great people. I've always had people who have had my back um, outside my family. If I've ever needed advice or just someone to talk to, I know I've always got someone to count on. and. Um, my my childhood didn't have much to complain about. I mean, it was it was just good. I mean, it was no good, no bad. I mean, it's just pretty pretty decent life. And then a few years ago, I kind of had the first reality hit in my life when um, my household kind of got split up, and it was kind of out of the blue. And so um, that definitely took a while. It took a hit, and I had to adjust. And I. I'm, like I said, those people that I had are on my corner. They weren't there to judge me or my family. They were simply there to support me uh, in anything I needed. If I needed a moment to get away or just some advice, they were always there for me. And so throughout the years, I've been able to adjust um, my family. Uh, things have changed, but the way my parents love me and my brother hasn't in the slightest. They They still... They still do everything in their power to raise me and my brother the way, the way that they best know how, and they're a very strong part of why I've lived my life through Christ the best way I can. And um, as for football, I didn't start playing football until my freshman year. I tried playing Pop Warner, and they had a weight limit, so I, <laughs> I had to, um, I would have had to play up a few years. And Mama said no to that one, so we just waited till high school. And it, uh, it it worked out. It worked out for the best. Ultimately, uh, we finished this year going undefeated in the regular season. It was one of the greatest team accomplishments I've had in my life. And uh, I'm blessed to say that with last Friday, I committed to play football at Southeastern University up in Lakeland. So I was very blessed to. Thank you. I was very blessed to continue playing the sport that I loved, and they are a faith-based college, so I will be able to continue growing my faith in Christ without, while still being able to play the sport I love. So all the things that I wanted to focus on, I was able to find that in this school, and it's not too far away for y'all to come watch, so come on, come on. Uh, yeah, that's, that's about it, really. Thank y'all for listening. Everett also played basketball for us for four years, so, but, uh, no, but ever ever was a great, <laughs> that season's over, it's, uh, we're done, we're done with that season, <laughs> but, uh, no, Everett was a true blessing, I mean, even though he goes to FSW again, which is in Ponte Gorda, it's obviously better for him, and education-wise, that he's getting, and it's furthering to him for college and everything, but uh, he's been a blessing to all of our programs that he's been involved with at Lemon Bay. And 
And pastor said it this morning, and I, he, I mumbled it, but, and I was telling his dad earlier, I said, Gary always says, when Everett was little, Everett was never little. <laughs> Everett, when he was three years old, was about this high. <laughs> and so, but it, no, he's, he's been a great, great pleasure to coach and to be around. And again, being at the football games until this year, I think Pat, uh, coach always had him leading prayer. And now coach leads it at the end of the night and everything. But it, it's just been a great, great time having Everett here and involved in the church and everything. And just wish you the best of luck in your next step. Coach Don Southwell. He told me he's wearing this shirt to make it look slimming. <laughs> well, those two guys did such a great job. That's a tough, couple tough acts to follow. Um, first, I would say, um, Pastor Fellowship Church has a wonderful reputation, not only in our community, but at our school. Anytime... Uh, you know, something's going on where, where you, you guys volunteer. You know, they, this church works in um, the concession stands at multiple sporting events. But just any time Fellowship Church's name comes up, no one ever has anything bad to say. They rave about it. So I just want to say that. And that's a testament, obviously, to you, Pastor, and, and your staff, but also these people that make up this church. So um, I tend to ramble. So I, I came up with, a, with an acronym, hopefully, to keep me on track tonight. But we'll see. Um, and I don't know how much time we have. All right, so first, maybe a little confessional. I'm the, the least likely or, or qualified guy to be standing up at the front of a church talking to a group of people. Um, I'm doing that for two reasons. Um, the mercy and grace of our God and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and his blood on the cross. And Gary Clark asked me through Coach Bears. That's why I'm up here, not because I think I should be. Uh, there's certainly a lot... Of people sitting right here that know more about the Lord in the Bible than I do, um, but He is my Savior, and I know that. Um, so, just a little bit of my testimony. There was never a time, really, in my life that I remember not knowing about God or believing in God. I was very fortunate uh, to be raised in a family that we went to church just about every Sunday. My mom was active in the church. My dad, at times, was active in the church. We did the Sunday school thing. Uh, grew up Methodist. And like Mike said, I'm not here to bash any, any, any denomination. I'm just not interested in doing that at all. Um, but I do remember a lot of choral reading. I, I learned all the Bible stories in Sunday school. Um, but I didn't know, no one ever said the word saved. Um, and I was in middle school, and one of my friend's uh, dads was a pastor at a local Baptist church, and they were having a revival. I didn't even know what that word meant. A lot of the kids in the class, you know, our buddies were going. They were excited about it, and I went along. And that night I heard the first time, you know, I, I'd always assumed I was going to heaven. I, I was introduced to the, the option of going to hell that night and uh, that I needed to be saved. And I still had no idea what that meant, really, but I knew I didn't want to go there. And so the best I knew how that night, um, certainly now looking back, it was pretty silly. What I thought, I thought I was making a deal with Jesus that, if I never sinned again, he, he'd take me to heaven. Well, that lasted probably into the parking lot. You know, just being real, you know, I'm pretty real. I'm, um, so, you know, I, 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 the best I knew how that night I gave my life to the Lord and then certainly um, failed multiple times in my mind what was a failure. And um, went off to college at the University of Florida. Um, and certainly there was no mama there. Uh, waking me up on Sunday and saying you need to go to church and, and I kind of strayed away a little bit um, I was very fortunate though and, I'll, and I'll, if we have time I'll talk a little bit more later but I was very fortunate to have what I call a praying mom anybody have an idea what I'm talking about anybody have one of those where you wake up in the morning she's sitting on the foot of your bed praying really honestly and you know uh, a scripture in, in my lunchbox when I get to school or hearing her from her bedroom audibly praying for me and probably that I would act right and get my, you know, stop messing with my sister or whatever it was. But, but I, I was fortunate to have a praying mom and I think that's what, you know, ultimately wherever I am right now helped keep me there. So moving forward, you know, I went off to university and um, I certainly still believe, but they will certainly fill your mind with some other stuff and uh, moved to Inglewood. 
as a 24-year-old guy, figured I'd never get married because there's no one that age here, I thought. And, uh, you know, but the Lord, the Lord works in, in crazy ways. And I met my wife who's sitting over there. And through her, I ended up at the place I worked in the auditorium, going to church again, uh, listening to a guy named Gary Clark. And um, we had some similarities. He was real to me. And that's where I first started learning that I was never going to be good enough to be saved on my own, that it was his grace and his mercy that, that saved us. And I learned that in this church and recommitted my life to Christ um, at, at the high school there. You know, and, and I certainly, I struggle. If you follow me for the next two hours, you, you know I'm, I'm not certainly not a perfect guy. Um, but I found, you know, I'm back in, in to where I belong in a church that, that preaches the Bible and, and uh, hearing, hearing the truth. And and very thankful to you and to my wife that uh, she, she drugged me because she probably did have to drag me that first time. Because I had a boat. I bought, you know, I was a young professional, just bought a boat and moved to Inglewood to fish. But uh, the Lord knows what he's doing. Yeah. And so now having that perspective, a 45-year-old guy looking back to that middle school kid that had no idea what he was doing, the Lord certainly did, bringing me to Inglewood, introducing me to my wife through a summer job. Um, you know, I wasn't even sure what I wanted to do with my life when I went off to college. I, I was just, like Gary says a lot, I was just a country boy. I would have stayed right there in Arcadia, Florida, bouncing around in the mud of the river, catching fish and hanging out with the guys and going to ball games. But my mom told me, no, you're getting out of here and you're going to college. And so I did. Had, you know, luckily I got a couple marbles rolling around in there. Got good enough grades that, that I could get in. And um, so uh, that's allowed me to have the profession that I ended up in almost by accident. Um, I loved football, and, and I thought I could pair that and, and maybe help kids with their, you know, my passion, with their passion, and, and, and get the Lord weaved in there and, and hopefully make a difference. And I, and I hope that's what's happening. Um, the last two years have certainly been pretty good for Living Bay football. We've been 18 and one uh, in the regular season over those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hope I'm not boring y'all to tears. Um, and people ask me, Coach, what changed? Because the year before we were at one point 0 and seven, had, could, couldn't even come close to winning, and um, won the last three, made the playoffs, and, and kind of the rest is history, as they say. I didn't change anything. If, if anything, I just maybe relax a little bit and said, Lord, it's, <laughs> I'm obviously no good at this. You're going to have to do it. And, um, and, you know, we started winning last season, not this one that just concluded, but the year before. And I, I just, I can remember driving home after a year of so much disappointment, driving home with contentment and just saying out loud to God, I promise you, I will not take one bit of credit for this, either publicly or, you know, in my, in my prideful head. Lord, I know you're doing it. Please keep doing it. I don't know why you're doing it. And let something good come out of it. And I think, and I think a lot has. So, you know, the Lord's certainly been too good to me. Uh, looking back, he's just, when, when, there's a song we sang here, You Find Me When I Can't Remember Where I Left Me. That's a pretty good story of my life. He, he's always found me and kicked me back where I need to go, and I'm thankful for that. So that's kind of what I had to share. <clears throat> Appreciate you. Thank you. All right. Rod, do you have any idea how much time's? Okay. Well, real quick, real quick, um, I just wanted to share again how much the church means to myself and to the school and the community. Um, I'm out there, especially like at school. I have the besides probably the principal of the high school, I probably got the best job in the school as an adult and a mentor and everything and being a coach, just because unlike Coach Southwell and other teachers, they're in a classroom all day long or in the gym all day long. I get the fortunate opportunity to walk around the hallways all day long. And it's funny because I, I tell those guys like, yeah, I've lost 30 something pounds, but then they're like, well, how much do you, I said, I average about 17 to 18,000 steps a day. But it's because of my job. And it's what I love doing is seeing kids. And I, I deal with the trouble, I deal with the good kids, I deal with them all. 
but it's, it's like when you can touch somebody, you can touch a troublemaker and just see a little change just from saying good morning or just say something like that. You, we have kids in these schools that have no idea what somebody saying congratulations like yesterday. I know the wrestling team is great. I had the opportunity yesterday to sit and work the wrestling match yesterday for, you know, nine hours or whatever, but to just see the guys that see me in the hall all the way, all the time saying, hey, thanks for coming and watching, coach. And I mean, I'm working, but it was just like shaking their hands and hugging them and everything, telling them congratulations on a big win. And you see kids that are really struggling in school and you, you, you put your arm around them and say, hey, like I've had a basketball player that is in, up until basketball season, he was in trouble every single day. And I'd be like, if you don't straighten up, we can't allow you to be a part of the program. Well, during basketball season, he improved to where it was like once a week he'd be in trouble. So it was a good thing. And I complimented him. Uh, and I complimented him on that. But it's just seeing the difference in his parents calling me and thanking me for being such an influence on this student and everything. And, it's, and that's what it's all about in coaching and being a mentor for the kids. You know, I've, I've had the opportunity be involved at Lemon Bay for about 28 years off and on but the last 10 years that's been so great is to see people that come back or they my wife gets on me all the time in the grocery store you know everybody in this town well if they went to Lemon Bay I probably do but but uh it's just great to see them I've had uh, I just had a football player who played for me back in 1994-95 that just retired two years ago from the Marine Corps well I was fresh out of the Marine Corps when I started coaching him. And so he always says that I was a big influence on his career decision or his life decision. And again, the kid was in trouble all the time in high school, but I was there for him and guided him. And that's what we get out of anything. And Coach Huber or the head basketball coach, he always, he always says to the kids, especially like the last night, is like, whatever you guys need in life, you guys got my phone number, call me, I'm there for you. And that's what it is with coaching in sports and reaching these young men and young women and everything in, in the school. It's just such an honor to be a blessing out there. And, again, hopefully, you know, we can lead more and more to Christ. I know 22 years ago I was at another ministry. I walked into the church and started coaching there a little bit. And 22 years ago today, Pastor Gary prayed with me, after, put his arm around me and prayed with me after church, and I said to Lord's Prayer and, and gave my life to Christ. And I thank him every day, and he knows it, and he's, he's my brother. We do everything together. We love each other. And just thank you guys again for being such a great church and uh, having the opportunity. Thank you, Donald and Everett and Mike, for coming up and saying something, too. We appreciate you guys, and we love you guys. Thank you. we got to get back. We wanted to be long enough. Hey, I love you, buddy. God bless you. What a great guy this guy is. <laughs> Funny thing, he's like a brother to me, and he's a weirdo. <laughs> he grew up in Ohio. He grew up in Ohio, but he is a die-hard Minnesota Viking fan. <laughs> Only God could do that. So he's like my brother, but he's a great, and so is his mother, and she feeds me on Viking football day. What a blessing. But anyway, thank you for being, what's it that, can we just thank the Lord? What a great evening. What a great job you did, big man. You've always had such good hair. I've been jealous of your hair my whole life, almost. Your whole life. <laughs> well, if I could get it to do, I would take it, son. But anyway, let's pray together. We wanted to be long enough so I did not hear Snoop Dogg or Dre nothing. Even if we miss half of a quarter, I could care less. Amen. Come on, let's pray together. Lord, thank you for a great night. Thank you for these guys tonight and their testimony. What a blessing. What a, what a feeling of love we feel here tonight. Love and of your redemption, your grace and mercy. Regardless of the struggle or trouble in our life that we've gone through, you have been the constant one that's helped us in our life to keep us on the path. And we appreciate that. Bless these guys. Bless the ladies as well that are working at Lemon Bay and trying to make a difference in our school system right there with these uh, these kids, we appreciate them. Bless them, we pray, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Football, here we go. Come on. That was pretty good.